well, it could be a long story, but I, I went to Harvard as a graduate student after being an undergraduate in a, a small college in uh, Wisconsin. And at Harvard, I heard a lecture by Max Perutz uh, on the structure of hemoglobin and myoglobin. And this was in uh, 1963, maybe. Uh, very, very early. And I was so excited, I decided that's what I wanted to do. And so then it turned out that uh, my PhD mentor, Lipscomb, who uh, was working on structural bio, well, structures at the time, and then went into structural biology as well, uh, uh, had a position available, and I went into his lab, and the rest is history. Well, it's understanding the chemistry of biology. Uh, the whole world is uh, made up of chemistry reactions. And uh, biochemistry is the chemistry of biological uh, um, uh, materials. Well, I just said that uh, actually Max Perutz uh, uh, lecture uh, when I was a starting graduate student was the starting point, uh, very important. And then uh, you know, there are lots of ones s subsequently. Uh, Francis Crick uh, um, got me interested in Crick's central dogma, DNA makes DNA, makes RNA, makes protein. Um, Francis Crick was in Cambridge when I went to uh, the other Cambridge to a postdoc, and that got me interested in that, and so actually almost my whole research career has been trying to get the structural basis of how uh, the, the, the structural basis for DNA being replicated in the DNA and DNA being transcribed into RNA and RNA being translated into proteins. I would say the, the important publications were in, in the year 2000 when we published the structure, the atomic structure of the 50S ribosome supplement, that's the large subunit of the ribosome, uh, and, and also some um, complexes with substrates to understand how the ribosome catalyzes the reaction. That was in science in 2000. Well, one of my standard lines in my lectures is that the only translational research I approve of is uh, the translation of RNA into proteins. Um, uh, uh, I think translational research support is a bad, bad idea. You have to start with basic research to understand the principles of, of how um, the world works before you can come up with the ideas for an application. So we, we started working on the ribosome in the mid-90s because I was interested in how uh, the ribosome translates RNA into proteins. We then realized later that the ribosome is a major target for antibiotics and then subsequently uh, we founded a company, I and some of my colleagues founded a company to make antibiotics that target the ribosome. We wouldn't start that way at all. Uh, it was uh, because it grew out of what we were learning from the basic research. Oh, I think at that age you're, you're busy learning language and other things. I, you know, you, your parents can tell you about birds and bees and biology and uh, turn rocks over and show you bugs. I mean, a little thing, but I don't think a, a serious science course is uh, right at that age. Well, I think there are many ways of evaluating uh, accomplishments. 
uh, the H index isn't terrible, but to, to do everything on the H index is a bad, bad idea uh, because certain kinds of uh, uh, publications get much higher citations. Like if it's a method, it gets very high citations. Uh, if it's a good method, and that's fine, but there are important things that uh, are not methods. And so I, I think one needs to evaluate the science and read the, read the papers and, and do a more thorough job of evaluation. Well, I think that's uh, very important my PhD advisor got the Nobel Prize, and his PhD uh, advisor had a Nobel Prize. Uh, so uh, maybe it's accidental, but uh, I think it's important to work with people who are very good. And uh, the uh, the LMB in Cambridge was the most exciting place. I've ever done research, and that was very important. And I think there were about oh, 15 or 17 Nobel laureates eventually there. So um, uh, it's important to work with excellent environment to get you excited about the, the science and understand it. Well, I think scientific literacy is important everywhere, including uh, in countries like the U.S. Uh, and I don't know how you do it except to have uh, it in schools and have uh, general general kinds of programs. But I really, it's it's a tough problem, but it's a very important problem.